We're dismantling the most significant, sentient weapon ever made. Welcome to the Pixelpot Movie Podcast. I'm your host this episode, Toby. With me, I'm joined by the all-in-white Ethan. Oh, yeah, that's me. Oh, mate, well, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the wielding chaos magic, Lucas. Thank you, I am a pretty witch. <laughs> <laughs> you pretty bitch. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, got him. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, if you tuned into our last podcast, you'll know that we discussed uh, WandaVision episodes one through five in both spoiler free and then spoilers. We're going to be doing episodes six, seven, and eight uh, in this episode. Again, both spoiler free and then spoilers. Lots to talk about, probably even more so than that front five, just because. We've sort of moved on from the sitcom and we're getting into the meat, the proverbial meat, so to speak. So lots of juicy stuff. Hopefully you've been enjoying it too. We do have... I was about to, was about to say, we've had, the, we've had the meat. We've had the main course. We're having dessert now. This is all <laughs> sweet treats, baby. One to go. Uh, we do have an awful a lot of news, though. There's been quite a bit. Uh, it's really starting to ramp up to the point that we almost switch back to fortnightly uh, this episode. And I'm sure it's coming soon. There's just It's just starting to to really uh, wind up. So let's start with that. Please take us away, Ethan. First bit of news we have, the Borderlands movie, Jamie Lee Curtis has joined the cast playing Patricia Tannis, which I think is a pretty good pick. Yeah, uh, I mean... She was, she's been in all three games, but then took a much larger role in the third game, without being spoilers, but, you know, movie's coming along good, the cast is filling out. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not interested in this film, but the cast, I've got to admit, is pretty solid. Oh, definitely. I mean, and following on from that, Jack Black's being cast as the voice of Claptrap. Yeah, that works. So, yeah. Yeah, I it think... definitely works. I think anyone who's not really familiar with the product is definitely going to be attracted to the names. Like... Oh, definitely, the, yeah. the big comparison I guess I could kind of give, like, is when Kevin Hart and, and The Rock joined... And Jack Black, funnily enough, joined on to um, Jumanji. Everyone was, like, all in on that Jumanji movie. Yeah. Even though they may not have seen the first one, or it may have been years between, you know, having seen it for for a while. Well, you're so. sure as shit not going to get the guy who actually did the voice of Claptrap in for the film. No, that's for sure. You remember yeah, all that did, that was nonsense? He's in, some, he's in some like legal dispute, right? Oh yeah, he didn't get paid for a lot of his work apparently. So yeah, yeah, two two mm, two k. Let's not go down that avenue. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so now all we need is the rock to be cast as brick. <laughs> and, we're good to go. and Karen Gillan will be Mordecai will be all good yeah because you also didn't say I think or was it last time that we talked about Kevin Hart being in the movie yeah it was the last time we were talking about it Kevin Hart yeah, and Kate okay. Blanchett Lilith and Roland that's so right so two more have been done now um, so yeah we've got those two we have Amazon original movie Tom Clancy's Without Remorse it's coming April 30th starring Michael B. Jordan yeah no that... idea what it's about but it's Tom Clancy it's so Tom it's, Clancy you know, so it's, it's, it's going to be yeah action spies that kind yeah. of stuff so apparently this movie was supposed to come out like last year and I had not heard about it until it popped up as a YouTube ad being like, hey, this movie's coming out soon. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, where did this come from? The trailer looks amazing. Really, I'm really, really excited for it. Uh, next we have Michelle Rodriguez and Justice Smith have joined Chris Pratt in a Dungeons and Dragons movie. Yeah. So, I mean, again, <laughs> super hesitant of Dungeons and Dragons movies just because they have a really bad bad track record so i mean jeremy irons was fine and and the rest of the, they're okay but it was it was mm. i'm still it's nice to see that some good casting but i'm still very hesitant i'm still very worried well would you be more worried when you find out who the director is and what they've directed in the past probably yes it would make it worse listen, listen they've, they've only listen, directed can I, can I can i jump in <laughs> don't say paul anderson outset. please no, no no i just want to say from the outset i fucking love this dude he is amazing so it's michael One bay of, great thanks no, no, it's, it's, no it's a duo <laughs> no no that's ethan you're it's, it's a duo. no it's a duo oh but, okay yeah. well let's just cut the suspense who is it this yeah, so is john francis daly and jonathan goldstein who have done vacation and game night never watched either of them i have no idea of precedence here they, so... they wrote the story for spider-man homecoming okay yeah. and horrible bosses and Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. 
the, the, the one that people might know the most is that these two were actually hired a while back to... They were one of the many, many people who cycled through the Flash. Oh, yeah, they were too. That's all right. Yep. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they also worked or had something to do with the Lego movie. Yeah. Um, like I said with the Cthulhu stuff, like Lovecraft stuff, most people never get it right, so it's always terrible. I feel Dungeons and Dragons is a real hard one to get right as well, because sort of go too far one way and it becomes niche, too far the other way and it becomes camp. So it's like it's very difficult to get this sort of thing down pat. Uh, so I highly, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who you put behind this. I would probably be even if you said you know. Gilmoro del Toro and Peter Jackson are behind it. I'd be like, mm, I'm still worried. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody that could change my mind on that. Next, we have Mark Rylance and Michael Ch- uh, Chiklis have joined the cast of Adam McKay's film Don't Look Up, which already includes Jennifer Lawrence, Leonardo you know, DiCaprio, Meryl Streep, Rob Morgan, everybody, Kate Blanchett, it, just TLDR, Devin. everyone. Yeah, it's everyone is yeah. in it. Huge this cast. This movie stacked. Yeah. So two good actors. We'll see them. Have, have uh, they actually heard what this movie's about? Yeah, it's something about Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence are a couple. I think they're trying to stop something happening to the world or something like that. Oh yeah, Don't Look Up tells the story of two low-level astro- astronomers who must go on a giant media tour to warn humankind of an approaching comet that will destroy the Earth. Basically. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, next, some of the biggest news. Uh, HBO has cast Bella Ramsey, who you'll know as Leanna Mormont from Game of Thrones, as Ellie in the Last of Us show. Yep. Not only, not only did they do that. Yeah, I was getting there. Just fucking give me a second. Not Lucas, only sorry. did they do that. You're burying the lead, baby. We're also getting Pedro Pascal as Joel. Holy shit! This is really funny. So, like, apparently a bunch of scoopses were coming out and saying, um, "Who was it?" Um, M- M- Mahershala Ali had circled the role for a while and decided to pass on it. Yeah, but they were saying that he was cast, and then literally like 20 minutes after this report came out, everyone was like quoting that one report being like well here we go it seems to be official hbo dropped the official notice that no it's not him it's it's pedro pascal and bella ramsey's also been cast as ellie the timing of it was just amazing <laughs> uh next we have uh gina carano is no longer part of the mandalorian or any spin-offs she's hate almost no it. part of anything at all anymore hate to see it next yeah so she got she was putting up uh some some right-wing stuff on social media that People it, didn't appreciate and uh, demanded it her. Right-wing. It wasn't straight up right wing stuff. It was borderline Holocaust denialism. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Well, comparing, comparing the the, the Jews' uh, treatment by the Nazis akin to how Republicans are being treated in the United States. Yeah, she put up some pretty straight inflammatory up. comments on social media and had been doing so for a while and. Yeah. and her attitude was, well, it's my social media account. If you don't like it, piss off. Which. I don't agree with what she's saying, but I can understand that sentiment. But obviously, when you're a public figure, um, you know, it doesn't go down well. And uh, so Disney said, well, goodbye. She was also putting up anti-COVID, anti-vax. Yeah, yeah. And look, at the end of the day, that's her opinion. She's entitled to it. The difference between her and me is, again, she's a public figure. So people are looking at what she's saying and she has a greater influence. Um, apparently people who are more familiar with the situation as well like there was stuff from variety i think um apparently disney were already looking for a reason to fire her and they this just happened to land in their lap and yeah that was kind of like you know they were like oh no really you had to go do this yeah it's a pity because i think she played the part well and i think she looked the part well i liked her physical size you know i think she she really played the i'm gonna kick your ass sort of female warrior really well so, a lot of people um, screaming for um, the lass Lucy who played Lewis? Xena, Lucy Laws, yeah, to really come and cool. fill the role, whether it happens or not. That. We'll That'd see. be cool because she was she was super dope in that Spartacus show. Next, we have Nick Frost has revealed that Free Seekers did not get picked up for a second season on Amazon Prime. Yeah, that was real sad. Yeah, it was on his. He posted a video direct to his uh, Instagram, and uh, for whatever reason, he didn't get into the specifics. But it, yeah, it didn't get picked up for a second season, which surprises me because. I thought it might have done pretty well, but I guess not. I'll be honest, besides Toby, I didn't really hear anyone else talking about it, so it just could have been that not many people were watching. Yeah, it just didn't get the traction. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Never say never. Look, Netflix might pick it up or something. Yeah, who knows? Uh, next, a Clue animated show based on the board game as it works at Fox. There was already a movie remake starring Ryan Reynolds in the work last year. Now we're getting an animated series based on it too. So, so lots they- of Clue. 
are they are they running concurrently or are they gonna i think so i don't know how you make a tv show out of this i mean a movie makes sense but how do you make a show you can make a show out of it you can take the movie and extend it out done yeah but like you can do the whole thing of like you know you could you could easily make this into a six episode i i think if you well i mean look yeah i'd have to read a script i think though just based on the premise of the board game alone if you were to turn it into a six-part series it would drag its feet an awful lot uh i mean it depends on the story like you know you, you can only wrap a game of clue up in what half an hour 45 minutes yeah it depends um, depends on dice you know, roll fucking game of clues yeah it de- depends on the dice roll <laughs> but yeah like um you know putting in a, like a like a story like look at um knives out like that was almost a two and a, i don't think it was almost a three hour movie yeah um, fair fair i just it's that, i suppose it's going to depend on how much they work within the confines of the board game and then to be fair the tim curry film didn't follow the confines of the board game particularly well either so you yeah. know it'll end up sort of being a murder mystery with clue you know influences yeah for sure yeah uh, and some news that all three of us are happy about. Cobra Kai Season 4 has started filming. Still Hell watched, yeah. Still haven't watched Season 3. Oh. Should do holy. it. Even I've watched Season 3. Wait, i got too many, too many other things to watch right now. I mean, I watched it in quarantine, so it's the only reason why. <laughs> and you didn't watch Season 4 of Men in the High Castle, so, you know. No, yeah. Hey, what's funny is, like, Toby was giving Ethan shit for not watching it, and then, like, Ethan smashed it all out before Toby could even finish it. Yeah, I didn't have COVID, I, though. I, I didn't have COVID. I was just in quarantine. Uh, we have a face-off movie reboot. You get Alan Wingard, who is the director of Godzilla vs. Kong, as the new director for the film. Why? I don't, I don't know why. The original movie was terrible. That's not going to get any better. Come on. It? It's a good guy and a bad guy, and they swap faces. What the fuck? Come on. You're going to tell, tell me... You're going to tell me Nicolas Cage doing the face... The actual face-off line with the hand and the... you got to tell me that that's terrible. It's a shit that's movie. for me, Lucas. I haven't seen it. It's a shit movie. You, honestly, I, I, I'd get you to watch it. Just like I'm not gonna watch it now that you said that, so don't bother. The the last <laughs> act is actually pretty good. Next, we have Brooklyn Nine Nine season eight will be its last. That's probably for the best. Okay. I mean, it's a good show, but like you don't want any CV show to overstay its welcome. No, that's for sure. It's. I think Brooklyn's had this real lucky kind of run in that. Like it hasn't felt like it's it's pushed the envelope too far or, or jumped the jump the shark, and I think that comes from the fact that like everyone on the show is so likable and like even remembering when that show was cancelled, you could tell people still wanted it. It's not like something like um let's say Big Bang Theory or or something that's kind of run like a long period of time where it's like all right cool you know how much more of the story can you do like there's a lot in the confines of that world that you could do. Next we have Loki will be streaming june 11th yep this is this is interesting timing falcon and winter soldier starts on the 19th of march and then runs through until the end of may and then while that's on black widow comes out at the no sorry at the end of i fucked that up so it starts it's middle of march ends at the end of april and then black widow's the start of may and then literally we're not going to have anything for like four weeks yeah for a until Loki comes out in that second week of June. Mm, so, right. I don't know, it's just weird. Like, the way that they're kind of talking about it, it sounds like there was going to be Marvel content literally every week for the whole year. But it doesn't sound like it's going to be the case. Yeah. Uh, next we have Zoe Ashton is tapped to play the villain in Marvel and Captain Marvel 2. Yeah, not much known about who she's playing yet. No, you might have seen her in Velvet Buzzsaw. I first saw her in the UK series Misfits. She was in that for an episode. Um, so yeah, we don't know who she's playing, but we'll find out yep. eventually. On to some trailers. We had a proper trailer for Zack Snyder's Justice League, which comes out on March 18th. Keen. Okay. Two weeks away. Very, very excited keen. for that. Very, very excited. Very keen. Are you going to re-watch Justice League before the Zack really? Snyder's? You're going to want to purge that from your memory first, I think. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm tempted to watch it just so I can sort of go, okay, yep, cool, yep, okay, that changed, I- yep. I might watch it after. Like I, I, I know just kind of from things that I've read and stuff leading into this Snyder cut coming out is that the Whedon version versus the Snyder version. I think they said there's only like thirty or forty five minutes of of Snyder's version they used in the Whedon cut. Like, that was a two hour film. Yeah, so, I think they said that Whedon reshot sixty or eighty percent of the movie. One of those. Yeah, two. yeah. So like realistically, we've only we've only seen about thirty to forty five minutes of the actual film. Uh, so it'd be a completely different film. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Probably be getting recut into different contexts. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Uh, we had a trailer for Cruella coming to Disney Plus. Yeah. This was interesting. I haven't watched it. I don't give a fuck about 101 Dalmatians in it. Basically, she's like a like a 60s punk villain, English Sex Pistols era type vibe. Like it, it looks it looks cool. It does look cool. So there was a so there was a Mortal Kombat trailer. <laughs> There's a Mortal Kombat trailer. Holy shit! Let's get on it. I was gonna send it to the end of the trailers because that was so good. But all right, let's talk about that one now. Yeah. Holy fuck! This is my most anticipated thing of this year. Holy shit! You yeah. fucking beauty. I watched the uh, yeah. the the 1995 oh. Paul W S Anderson Mortal Kombat the other night. I'm gonna do that as well. I'm gonna watch both of them. God, that? it's a terrible film. Yeah, you watched Paul W S Anderson. Yeah. Fuck me, no way. I didn't. Well, know that's I... why it's so bad because the guy's a hack job and he should be like buried alive. Well, I also watched Alien vs Predator on the weekend, and that's him as well. Yep, he has no good films <laughs> under his on his resume. None, not a single one. Alien vs Predator is actually not bad. No, nah, it's shit, and it's even <laughs> like once it's once it's IMDb Metacritic score is like one. It's it's the worst thing ever. He is a hack. Oh, no, 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 no. He is an absolute hack. He needs what? to be thrown out. The first. Re- oh, what are you talking about? I'm nah, sure no, Ben. Event Horizon. Ben. Yeah, Event Horizon's fucking great. Ben. Yeah, Event Horizon is. Ex- You're gonna tell me that Dead or Alive is a bad film? Holly Valance. How was that bad? Holly Valance. How was that bad? Ben. Holly Valance. How was Holly Valance? <laughs> how was Holly Valance throwing her bra up in the air, beating some guys up, catching a gun as it falls back onto her? How was that a bad thing, Toby? Ben. Yeah, match point, my friend. You can't win there. Absolutely, I can. He's a hack job, and he shouldn't be in the industry. I will say. How can you lose when they have a beach volleyball seat? Yeah, right. So, bad thing. I'll, I'll say right. I'm looking again. I'm looking through his movies. There's okay. So Event Horizon was great. First Mortal Kombat was okay. No. I liked the first Resident Evil movie, no. but I will say his his Three Musketeers movie was pretty good. Like I don't think that can be disputed. <laughs> and yeah, what right. universe was that good? Yeah. Right. Okay. So he's shit. <laughs> Moving on. This new Mortal Kombat That's looks much better. Great. Oh, this new Mortal Kombat looks fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It looks okay. We'll see how we go. At least it's not no. Paul Anderson. No, it looks amazing, Toby. You, you don't get it. You wouldn't it know amazing, amazing if it walked up and smacked you in the face. Look, I've seen Skyline 3. My point times. exactly. No, right? No, no, you have no, zero no. credibility. And you don't, and you won't watch Stanley Kubrick, so enjoy your Paul Anderson. Yeah, because Paul Anderson's better than Stanley yeah, Kubrick. Yeah, right, cool. Been. Moving on. But uh, I'm really excited for this. This is, what, when is it? April sometime? Uh, so yeah, April 16th. Yeah, well, hopefully yeah. it hasn't got a French guy with a crap accent playing a Chinese god. That'd be neat. No, you have... Uh... A Chinese guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he played Hogan and mm. Thor. He's yeah. playing Raiden. Yeah. And also the pick for Scorpion's great. Josh Lawson as Kano. Fucking great. I think, it's old. I think, I think all the casting's pretty good. Yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of Makai Brooks outside of Supergirl, because literally everything I've seen him in outside of Supergirl has not been good. I've only seen him in Supergirl. He, he, he looks fucking solid as um as Jax. Jax. Like I I, I kind of like am biting my tongue a little bit on hit like even though the movie's not come out yet, I didn't think he'd be good in the role. And he looks the role. Like he looks the part and yeah, I don't know. I, again I'm gonna have to wait for the movie to come out to, to know for sure, but yeah. To be fair, look at the original Jax from Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah, he just takes his arms off. He just things that go over his arms. Well, the original Jax yeah. does still has his arms, but I'm talking about. I think he's actually the original actor who played Jax in Mortal Kombat 2 is dead now. But you have a look at the size of him. He's way bigger. He's huge. Yeah. The guy's a it's beast. Saying, I'm saying that though. I don't think you could find someone that's really that big. Yeah, the rock. Get the, yeah, get the rock to play Jax. You you just, yeah, how many of them are that big? They're also good actors. That's the bigger problem. Yeah. The rock. Yeah. Like, Mark, but like Mark Henry. Mark Henry. Get Mark Henry to just have the rock play every character. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he's Sub Zero. He's Scorpion. He's Sonya. He's Goro. He's know? Goro. Just oh my God, he duct tape like, two like, extra arms to him. He's Scorpion he's... and he throws the chain out, screams "Get over here!" and then does the eyebrow right as he throws the chain. Anyway. Uh, no, no, actually, no. The Rock needs to be Shao Kahn in the second movie. That's what he needs to be. The original actor who played Shao Kahn was a little dude too. He's only like five foot bloody three or four or something, and then they just made him bigger. Oh, anyway, that's I mean, for Tom Cruise. So. Exactly. Moving on. Uh, we got a title for Spider Man. We got several Spider-Man. titles. Spider Man. We, we we got several titles leading into it, and then we got the final title, which is Spider Man No Way Home. Yep. 
But Which if you watch I, that mini trailer and the images that go around it, it, it adds even more weight to a multiverse argument. Oh well, yeah, because there's home worlds written there. Can't find home. Yeah. All the rest. So I, I kind of got a theory on that. Do you think in each reality that they go to, that's what the movie's called? No. I don't know. Like. Yeah. No. Yeah. Of course. What do you mean? You don't know. But I think that's a, that's the implication. I gather. Yes. Yeah. Imagine like if they like jump a timeline and then the name of the movie changes. That's sort of kind of what I mean. Like, yeah, I like, think that's uh, the implication, but I don't think jump. you can do it in in the movie itself. No, no, no. But like, say like they jump into another dimension and we get a new title card and it's like you know, um, fucking Spider Man Welcome Home or like Spider Man like whatever else was on. You that. had to say Welcome Home, didn't get you? Fucking that's the one that I. That's the, that's the one that I remember from the board. Of course, it's the one you remember. It's also a really cool marketing technique because then Sony gets to release like six different DVDs and Blu-rays with different <laughs> covers with yeah, different movie get- titles, right? That's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, Fox, the Demon Deadpool came out. They did pull on like 20 different movie covers. Like, yeah. Alien. yeah like the Die Hard one. And, yeah. 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 Um, but judging from this and things we know and those three initial images that came out, I assume that they uh, jump into the multiverse. Yeah. I think we Yeah. I think that's 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 largely what we've been predicting I'm, for a while. Yeah. I'm not going to go into it because it turns more into like theory crafting spoiler stuff, but. Yeah. Uh, this one came out of nowhere, but a TV show called The Irregulars coming to Netflix. On yeah. March 20th. Yeah, so this is The Irregulars from the Sherlock Holmes stories. So it's sort of coming from their perspective. And it uh, looks like there's a bit of a budget behind this one too. It's 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 sort of, the production quality looks pretty good. So there's, it's not just children either. There's sort of all age, but it's the, it's the you know, it's the criminals. It's the, the homeless. It's the, the riffraff. That sort of thing. Um, and uh, if you're into Sherlock Holmes and Sherlock Holmes alternatives, this looks not bad, actually. You know, they're solving supernatural crimes. Yeah, it definitely felt like it had a, a more menacing uh, yeah. sort of theme to it. And then we have a small trailer for Army of the Dead coming to Netflix in May, directed by Zack Snyder and Dave Bautista in the lead. Is Bautista the actual lead of the film? Yeah, he's the lead. Interesting. I didn't know that. I thought it was yeah. like a, like a um. It, it, it's kind of like an ensemble cast. Yeah. But I think that he is like the lead. Yeah, right. Which I mean, Zack Snyder's going back to zombies, so big yeah. budget looks like it could be good. I'm pretty sure he said that Netflix just gave him free reign to do what he wanted on this, so he's not blocked by any studio interference or anything. Fair enough. Gremlins prequel show has cast Ming Na Wen, B D Wong, and Matthew Reese. Yeah. Animated Gremlins show coming to HBO Max. Yeah, just, just, just leave the Gremlins alone, please. It's good as it is. I'm just glad that every year that goes by and we still don't have anything new on Big Trouble in Little China. It's like, yes, excellent. Rock's gonna, the Rock's gonna do his thing once he's finished doing no, Black and then no, the Furious no, again. No, they're gonna leave it alone. That's everything they, else, they're gonna leave it the fuck alone. Okay, <laughs> let's start. I'm gonna come over there and gonna have to smack a bitch. <laughs> I mean, Kurt Russell just doesn't want them to do it either. Good. He's again. Speaking of that, Big Trouble Little China is now on Disney Plus under the Star Banner if anyone wants to watch it. Yeah, yeah. so there's a whole bunch of other stuff too. So oh, glad yeah, I oh, bought cool. that yearly subscription for $89.95. Well, uh, we'll, we'll get into all that we've been watching because I've been watching quite a bit. Yep, okay. Um, speaking of Paul W.S. Anderson, as we mentioned him before, yep. Paul W.S. Anderson and Miller Jovovich have teamed up with Dave Batista for George R. Martin Adaption in The Lost Lands. Big surprise, he's got Miller Jovovich again. Holy shit. Yep. So, Dave Batista's co producing. Bin. He has a production company. In the bin. Uh, the movie full follow a queen desperate to obtain the gift of shapeshifting. It makes a daring play. She hires the sorceress Grey Alice, played by Mila Jovovich. I'm going to bet. A woman as fair as she is powerful. Since wanna... the ghostly wilderness of the Lost Land, Ellie's and her guide, the Drifter Voice, played by Dave Batista, must outward outfight man and demon in a fable that explores the nature of good and evil. Alright, legit here. I'm gonna bet you. I'm gonna bet. Shut up. No one wants to hear this shit. I'm gonna <laughs> bet you 10 bucks. Legit handshake bet 10 bucks. This thing flops hard. And I got a few reasons. Firstly, everybody after sit like the last episode of Game of Thrones got burnt, got burnt hard, won't be going back to anything. Trying to shovel Game of Thrones into people's faces now real hard. Two, Paul W.S. Anderson. Three, Mila Jovovich. Been. This is gonna flop so hard. First of all, I'm not gonna make their bet for no <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. A lot of people are really looking forward to that nah. new Blood of the Dragon, whatever it's called, like the, the prequel. 
Maybe, there's, but there's, th- this is not it. No, I think I think a lot of people know that the last season, a, a lot of the problems with the last season had to do with Weiss and, and Benahoff. So the fact that they're not even tied to this new series, I think is going to be interesting. I think people are, are smart enough to disassociate this film from Game of Thrones. I think you give people too much credit. Mm. No, I, I think this will flop. Well, you know, the last movie that Paul W. Sanderson did was actually really fucking good. That's uh... no, it wasn't. And it was... I'm talking about I'm talking about Monster Hunter. It was a pile of shit. <laughs> I liked it. I didn't think it was bad. It was terrible. I would rather shit in a, in a paper bag, set it on fire, and inhale the smoke than watch that fucking film again. It was terrible. <laughs> the guy is a <laughs> hack. He's done nothing yeah. good. Moving on. Moving on. The Halo series has moved to Paramount Plus. Oh, speaking of. CBS All Access is now going to be Paramount Plus. Okay. That's and not here though, right? No, it's not here. So the Halo TV series has jumped from Showtime to Paramount Plus, and that comes out next year. Quiet Place 2, Mission Impossible 7 will be on Paramount Plus sim- oh, 45 days after it hits cinemas. It'll so it'll be on the Pirate Bay 45 days after it hits cinemas. <laughs> we don't speak of that. I, be, I don't know what, what, is, what is that? Right? I've never, heard, ne- of never it. heard of it. Exactly, right? Yeah. You're Australian. Everyone in Australia has heard of it. <laughs> Where do we get our Game of Thrones from? <laughs> I got it from my Foxtel subscription that I had to watch That's, Game of you Thrones. You did. You actually that did. That is right. I that did. is right. I used my Foxtel. Yeah. And I would use Lucas's binge account. Uh, uh, sorry, we don't do account sharing either. No, account sharing is naughty and no one, ha- no one here has ever done it. I don't have nine profiles on my Disney Plus account. <laughs> no, you do not, Ethan. That is correct. That would be naughty. Uh, next, a Superman solo film is on the way from uh, Tarnasi Coates and J.J. Abrams. Yes. Now, isn't hey, there... Uh, am I getting my news confused, but isn't there a talk that this is going not to be not going to be Clark Kent? No, this would be Val Zod. Yeah. This is, this is going to be... And awesome. it's uh, apparently... Michael B. Jordan had approached DC a couple of years back, might have been last year, the year before, about doing a Superman movie. So this could be that. Right, yep. Wouldn't surprise me. If, if for those that haven't read them, the Tarnese Coates run of Black Panther is the best Black Panther comics, like, ever. And I would recommend people read them to get a sense of how well he could do a Superman movie. Henry Cavill has kept saying that he wants to repri- reprise his role. And I assume that he probably still will when he kicks off against the fight against Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam. I'm sure they'll do that. But this is just a separate universe. Some, who knows if some might even be sent in the universe of the Batman. We don't know. Yeah. Um, the last bit of news is something that I'm insanely excited for. And that is Neil Blomkamp has confirmed that a District 10 screenplay is being written by him, Shouto Copley, and Terry Tatchell who was one of the original idols, and that it is coming. So, I haven't seen the original, but Charlotte Sh- Sh- uh-huh. Copeland uh-huh. in the first film one, uh-huh. right? Huh? What? I've told you this. No, you haven't. Numerous times. No, you haven't. Yes, I have, because you keep telling me to watch it, and I keep telling you I'm not going to watch it. Okay, so when you come over tomorrow, we're watching it. No, 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 Yeah, sir, yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, no. Yeah, like... Yeah, Sh- 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 Copeland is the main... He's been in every single one of Neil Blomkamp's films. So he right, was the main okay. in District. He was the main in District Nine. He played Kruger in Elysium, and he was Chappie in Chappie. I knew he was in Chappie. I knew yeah, he was Chappie. I don't even know if I've all. seen. I don't even know if I've seen Elysium yet. To be honest, that's the one with Matt Damon. Of the three, I would yeah. say District Nine is probably the best, though. It is the best. Yeah, it's hundred percent the best. Yeah. I don't know. There's something about it. I just I wasn't really into. Like, I yeah, fucking heck. That's why. It's I, it's. I think it was, it, it's one of those films where you sort of put it on. You like, can, can we just like move on? I don't want to hear bad things about it, so let's it, just move it on. It took a little bit for it to grab me, but by you sort of by the time you get a third of the way in, you're pretty invested in it. Yeah, I don't know. It just seemed like too much of like a try hardy documentary. No. Like, well, okay. The thing is, is that I, I know I know there's a whole bunch of like it's the, the story itself is based around a whole bunch of civil rights. Yeah, like, his um, he, his, his movies are quite political. Yeah. and what they reference in the background but they still like have the sci fi ness and things like that but they also carry heavy political elements in the background oh very much I'm so not, I mean it's yeah, clearly clearly for... dealing with apartheid oh yeah exactly yeah. and I'm not one for like to lean heavily into politics 
yeah, it's still wanna... there and noticeable. You can understand it while still enjoying it for the sci-fi that it is. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Just the, the documentary style, like of the trailers and like clips that I've seen, like I don't know. It felt like it felt like it was trying to lean too hard, in, like into the into like a mockumentary type thing, and like nah. I, I can only really get into mockumentary type stuff like that if it's done well. And the, everything that I saw for it, I wasn't. I wasn't. Well, it, again, it, it, it makes sense when you watch it. Like it's, it's I get what you mean, but when you actually watch it, you'll get what they're trying to do and realize it's not leaning into that really. Anyway, I think I think the trailers may make it seem like it is, but it's not. Um, but yeah, so that's coming. That's literally the only movie I care about right now until that's out. I thought you were hyped for Mortal happy. Kombat. I am. But, uh, I mean, in terms of what movie is coming, this is all I want in, in development sort of thing. This is all right, so we don't, you don't need any Marvel stuff anymore? No, once I get just I mean, once I have District 10 and it's done, then I'll need it again. But I've been waiting for this for, like, 12 years, so... Right, yeah. But that's the news. <laughs> that's the news. All right, so let's move into some, other than WandaVision, what we've been watching lately. Uh, let's start with Lucas. What have you been watching lately? Good question. Just WandaVision and just, Superstore. Just... Like, I'm so... Yeah, okay. plugging away through Superstore. That's it, like that just gets progressively funnier as it goes along. Yep, a hundred percent. Yeah, you gave us the um, lowdown on that last episode. Yeah, yeah. I think that's all we really would watch. Oh, and then yeah, last night we. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I okay. I'm only gonna say it. I only watching it for one person. <laughs> <laughs> but I started watching that Married at First Sight last night because there's a chick in it that is in a band that I like, and I just want to see kind of what happens with her and. Her, so her, her story's been fucking awesome. So, yeah, we gotta watch episode five tonight after I get off this. So, the funny thing is, like, last year, I watched last year's season, and I was gonna sign up for this season. I downloaded the sign up page and everything like that. <laughs> I thought, oh, fuck it, why not? Do it. I didn't, but I was about to. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what have you been watching lately, then, Ethan? Um, Superstore as well. I watched, now that Star is on Disney Plus, mm-hmm. I watched all of that Cat Denning show, Dollface. I watched all of that in one night. So, okay, so is that, I, I, I saw that. Is that the whole of season one or is that yeah, week whole, to week? No, 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 it's all of season one. Okay, on. cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch that. that I yeah. really want to check that out. Uh, I watched and... all of that. I watched Alien vs. Predator 1 and 2 on Saturday. And then last night I watched Prometheus and Alien Covenant. And then on Saturday, I went to the movies and watched the Demon Slayer movie at the cinemas, which is an anime movie. Right? Yeah, actually, anime. no. Yeah, I knew, but that 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 was um, that was uh, like one of the biggest films in Japan or something, wasn't it? It was the seventh highest grossing movie worldwide last year. Yeah, yeah. And, that and, was... and only released in Japan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. The news. A big, big, big movie. It also broke a ton of records in New Zealand too, right? Yeah, it's like one of the fastest sold out movies in New Zealand too. Yeah. Was it good then? That was really good. Like my, my cinema was completely packed. They had three three sessions initially, and then all of those were selling out so fast. They had a two gold class and a normal session in every day. Nice. It just kept, it just kept selling out. That's good. Crazy. It's it's, it's insanely popular anime, and it was really good. Really really good. Nice. Well, I, I watched watch. um, obviously watching Wonder Vision. I watched uh, Monster Hunter, which is terrible. Don't watch it. Um, I was really disappointed because uh, I think Tony Tony Jaa is an amazing martial artist and they really he really just doesn't get to flex at all in this movie in any meaningful way. Uh, so just go watch Old Back instead. Yeah, it's terrible. It's it's absolutely terrible. The story is terrible. Oh, the oh. camera work is like somebody with high level ADHD. It's it's like Chris it's it's like um, Michael Bay. It's for the first third of the film there's no single shot that lasts more than about one and a half seconds. It's, it got so bad at one point, I'm not kidding you, I'm not trying to be funny, my eyes couldn't focus on the screen fast enough to see what was going on. It was so bad. Ah, Transformers Syndrome. It, it was just so bad. Uh, I think bad about Transformers. The, yeah, the, the sets are average, the special effects are average, the lighting is average, the whole thing just felt like it was done on a shoestring budget, and uh, it was literally a crew and some actors in a desert for a week filming a movie, and it's just, it's terrible. And I haven't played Monster Hunter, but I can only imagine that people who play Monster Hunter probably feel pretty disenfranchised by this. Anyway, uh, avoid. I, I was going to say, all the positive reviews I've heard from it have been people that actually play the, the Monster Hunter games. Oh, well, as a piece of film, it's a pile of junk. Yeah, I played the Monster Hunter games, and I thought that, like, 
to me, the movie got better once you got past the military aspect. Once that was yeah. done, then it was better. That's that's. I think the movie would have been better if they just removed the soldiers and Mila Jovovich altogether and just focused on this this party that's, in the fantasy world. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been. It would have been huge better. But you know, like but, you know, you had to find this sort of human connection. I have no idea why. It's just terrible. It's just a pile of shit. Um, it's because it's because we're so. What's the right word? We're so stupid. kind of like no 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 no. Hollywood has this idea of relatability. So we need to see people who are human beings that are in the real world go over into the fantasy world for them to think that we have oh, well, any I, chance to relate to the characters. I'm not American, which is why I enjoy so much watching, you know, European and Asian and, and, and television the, because it just breaks the mold. The, the strange thing with this, though, is, is that Porter V. Anderson worked with the actual creators of yeah. Monster Hunter and, and they were completely fine with what he was doing. Yeah, it's yeah, Capcom. They, the same they, people that gave Paul W. S. Anderson the rights to Resident Evil. They don't know a brick wall when it smacks them <laughs> in the face. So, you know. Well, I mean, they do because they gave the rights to someone else who is actually doing a faithful Resident Evil game. Seriously. Yeah. You know, you, the, you want to see good Capcom adaptations is watch the anime stuff. Because I used to be big into Street Fighter. And the anime stuff is way better than anything they got put well, to I mean, film. that uh, Castlevania is apparently really fucking good on Netflix as exactly. well. Exactly. So, I mean, avoid live action. Because it's made for mainstream American audiences that don't understand and, and need to relate. So they have to put a human in there. Blah, 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 blah. Bin. Bin. In the fucking bin. Anyway, moving on. Uh, still watching Disenchanted. <laughs> on uh, Netflix when oh, I get yeah. chance. Season three? Yeah, season three. I'm working my way through that. It's quite good. Still laughs. Still get good laughs out of that. Uh, we went for a drive over the weekend uh, out into the countryside and we found a, on our journeys, we found a video easy store that was closing down. I couldn't believe that there was actually what? still, yeah, right. Uh, so it was closing down. All the, Most of the signage had been taken down, but they, uh, they were doing a whole bunch of DVDs and Blu-rays down to about $2 a pop. So I picked up a bunch of stuff that I sort of needed to finish collections that you wouldn't normally pay full price for so i got alien covenant for two dollars nice. i got i got the fourth uh underworld film you know the, the vampire werewolf oh, stuff yeah, yeah. got that on blu-ray for two dollars that's way you paid nice. way too much for that movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it only goes for like 65 minutes or something too from memory it's really short uh, yeah, but I needed it to finish the series. Uh, my daughter got um, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, <laughs> which is like the worst of the worst Mortal how Kombat. Much? How much? How much? How much? How uh, much? Two dollars. No, 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 that's about right. <laughs> I'd pay two bucks for that before I'd pay two dollars for Underworld Four. But we got some good stuff too. We got Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, we got um, the the Clansman, the Black Clansman, or whatever it was. That was a good oh, movie. Oh my god! Two bucks. Have you watched? That? Have you watched that yet? Yeah, yeah, I watched it. I've already seen it. Yeah. What? Did you like it? Yeah, I thought it was really good. Yeah, that movie was solid. I, um, I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting that movie to hit me as hard as it did until that last ten minutes. Yeah, but we, we got about a dozen movies or more, and it was it would pay like twenty bucks or something, so that was pretty good. Uh, so we sort That's of great. yeah 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 you know, so we sort of we sort of get through those slowly. But apart from that, I think my TV has dialed back a little bit. But yeah. And of course, yeah, just just one division. My wife watched all of the stand on Amazon Prime. She said it was okay, that it was better than the original TV series, but wasn't, you know, the greatest thing ever either. So I actually just got my Prime back because I want to watch that. So yeah, well, she, I think she said it was, she said it was okay. She said it was okay. Um, so. speaking of Ethan brought up Sam before a star before I completely forgot like that's launched since we since we last were on yeah um I started watching Fresh Off the Boat because I need more Randall Park in my life yeah and that, that's been very funny it's that's something I would recommend people watch all right so let's move into uh WandaVision episodes six seven and eight uh we're gonna do spoiler free first so which will probably be fairly brief because there's not much you can say now being that we're in the the middle of things but we can talk about pacing and how we feel audiences are more likely to respond i suppose uh did you want to take this the lead on this one uh, ethan start start us on, on this yeah. do you feel these three episodes are better or the same or i feel like they are better well juicier know, because... juicier uh, ju juicier yeah not better because the other ones while well, we had the circle episodes were great for what they were and trying to like unravel everything that's going on that's they're not showing us like read between the lines look between the pixels uh, um i feel like yeah that these last like next three ones have been a lot more juicy and given us a lot more they, they just filled us in really has it all sort of gone where you thought it would go or has it twisted and turned and and gone places you didn't expect it to 
it's or is one it... place that I didn't expect it to, but yeah, it, it's unpredictable, which is good. Okay. Because a lot of the time when we see like a Marvel thing, we can kind of go to the comics and be like, oh, well, this happened, so we know what this is going to happen. Whereas this isn't based off one single thing, so we can't run into the comics and know exactly what's going to happen. Right. Any any characters that you particularly don't like uh, or, or have found that you liked more now or anything like I that? I absolutely hate Randall Park. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> he's great. No, no uh, Hayward, I'm sure everyone hates Hayward. We will not take Randall Park slander in this household. Well, I think I think you're supposed to hate Haywood. So to that end, yeah. as far as the actor's going, he's doing his job. But yeah. Yeah. Right. And what about you, Lucas? Have you found that the, the show's largely sort of been predictable for you? Have you sort of gone, oh, yep, I called that. Yep, I called that. Or has it sort of really thrown you for uh, uh, to, to the, you know, the winds and you don't know where you're landing? You know what? It's only been predictable because we've seen, like I've been reading stuff kind of behind the scenes. It's been a mix of that, but then also kind of knowing some of the stories and stuff that they could adapt, like obviously House of M, West Coast Avengers. There's stuff in it that's predictable, but it's like, I'm at a point where I don't care because I'm seeing it happen in front of me. And like, the, the like, it's not like the magic's going away because I've I've read these books and I kind of like, I'm like, all right, I can see where this is going. And, and in two episodes time, it's there. It's the fact that it's, they're actually doing it. Like I had a sneaky suspicion they were going to do something and i was sitting at the end of the last episode and all i could do is write on facebook was like the crazy sons of bitches are gonna fucking do it it's just i knew it was i i had a feeling it was coming and then when in, they kind of like confirmed it i was like i didn't care that i i knew it was coming like i was i was just excited to see it happen but no like the the the, the last three episodes have been amazing i literally cannot wait for friday because I just know I'm like my socks are going to be blown off and, and my head's going to explode and especially with the way the last episode ended. Yeah, well this final episode too should probably run a little bit longer I think as well. Um, I'm not confirmed that about 5 minutes. Yeah, yeah, cuz they the, the, the overall each each show is meant to run for about 6 hours approximately so yeah, this final one should be should be nudging up close to about an hour I would suspect. So that'll be good. That'll be good. Yeah, personally, uh, I yeah, it's it's. I I think again, if you were put off by the first three episodes due to the the sort of uh, uh, sitcom uh, angle, by the time you get to the end of episode four, obviously things should be really starting to look up, and then beyond that, by now you should be just invested in it as a Marvel experience, just like a film. So uh, if you sort of watched the first couple and it wasn't for you, uh, I would wait till sort of the this weekend and, and everything's out and then just do the whole thing in one go i think i think that's for some people they need the band-aid ripped off to get through the first three or four episodes but i think after that uh especially if you're invested in the movies in any way at all like if you're planning to go and see you know the the continuation of the mcu uh you're going to want to see this show and uh if i'm not mistaken it's not a spoiler but i don't think we've had whatever the big cameo is yet have we no um but... so so we'll get into that later i yeah we'll I... get into that later <laughs> okay all right so uh yeah i mean there's not much more we can say without getting into spoilers if you if you if you've dug your heels in and you're not going to watch it well then that's fine because you can stick around now and listen to our spoilers and of course next episode we'll be covering episode nine discussing the show in its entirety and obviously where uh, what that means for the rest of the MCU going forward, and depending whether it's a two or three week gap, we may also have Snyder Cut Justice League as well. We'll just see how we're going. Let's sound the warning bell, ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling, -ling. and uh, we'll jump into some spoilers now and uh, dissect some of the juicy stuff that's been happening, uh, in particular in the most recent episode. Probably easiest we just let Lucas off the leash first and let him get. No, me, me. All right, all right. Then go on then. I right, because I want to say what Lucas wants to say. That's the only reason. Oh, okay. Go on. You want to steal his thunder? <laughs> so that uh, big cameo that Paul Bettany keeps talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on! I gave this to you. <laughs> I gave this to you. Don't take this from me. The big cameo Paul Bettany's talking about is Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany. Think, think about think about everything Paul Bettany has said about this mystery actor. 
But like he, he said, he's been a fan of this person for like twenty years. He hasn't worked with them before. They share no, no, scenes together. No, no, the no, chemistry no. is explosive, and there's fireworks when they he, share scenes. He also said this is someone he has respected his entire career and has never had the chance to share the screen with before. This cheeky little piece of shit has been toying us all along, and then like when that reveal at the end of the last episode came up straight away i'm like paul bettany's the fucking cameo he is the fucking cameo and i'm gonna be <laughs> so mad because he's been toying with us this whole time and then like like i said you go back and you look at the interviews and stuff he's like pumping himself up like you can tell it's him talking about himself the sneaky shit <laughs> so before we jump into the the sort of the post credit or whatever it was seen there uh what I sort of took away from this episode too uh, is that Agatha, while she's been pulling the strings to a degree when she got into town, she's not the instigator. It's Scarlet that, that has created this thing. And then as a result of that, Agatha's come along and gone, what the hell's going on here? Uh, and has started poking around. So the question sort of is, I suppose, is there someone else behind all of this or is it just as it appears scarlet got depressed and did some big magic boom um scarlet got depressed and some big magic boom i would urge you though uh, to go I, back I and watch the episode said, because if you what it's harkness isn't it he absolutely is egging her on when she comes to visit you mean hayward hayward sorry if you yeah you watch this he is absolutely oh, yeah yeah because he knows that he needs a power source from her so he knows what she can do he knows that he needs her to do something to give him a power Absolutely. source to but, activate it. But I mean, we're talking about, I mean, sure, he's the director of S.W.O.R.D., but it seems like a pretty grand plan to lure her in, trigger an emotional response, just so that you can put Vision back together again. I, I just wonder if it, does he have it in him, or is he not who he seems, or is he uh working with someone else one theory i had was that this this potentially ultron could be involved somehow uh because in the comics of course ultron comes back over and over and over, and over. Ultron, never, ultron never goes away he just never like, goes away he's a I'll, virus i'll be honest like I, I thought about it but ultron's a really good call to, i don't know because he could like, be directing he could be sort of influencing the director perhaps under a pseudonym like the director might not know it's ultron but if ultron's in his system he could be influencing the director you know hayden and and so because obviously i would imagine if ultron's still around he's gonna want his body back yeah very possible so what we have though of course now is the white vision which is oh straight from the comic books it's a version of vision that hasn't been emotionally in imprinted with um wonder man and uh so in the mcu it's going to mean that we have a vision that doesn't have uh little bits of you know it doesn't have stark it doesn't have banner it doesn't have uh the mind stone uh, the emotional connection to wanda and all that sort exactly it's just going to be a synthetic and obviously sword is going to be hoping that it's it's a a controllable weapon for the forces of good quote unquote i can't say too much but i think I think Hayward is just a military guy who runs sword, who's just trying to do whatever he can to get what he wants. I don't think something's controlling him. I, don't, I, I just think he's just there. If anything, he could be a scroll in the skies and that'll lead him to secret invasion, if anything. Uh, yeah, like I, I think he's just a government man because the the big thing, right, when when we saw all the stuff for sword debuting in the MCU is that obviously the original version of sword is the um it stands obviously for sentient world observation and response department but in the series it stands for sentient weapon so the fact that like they're making vision into a weapon yeah he's the I sentient like, weapon yeah yeah he's gonna be a sentient weapon that they're gonna use to essentially defend the earth from scrolls because at least with jimmy Wu in like the board in the background and stuff in episode four they know that the scrolls exist they're very aware of it so they right. know that there's aliens out there that can come and get them but come and get them any time plus obviously with thor being an asgardian and, and you know so tldr the, is there someone else behind hayden you think probably not i don't think so i think he's no. just a government man okay. that 
I, like again, I think he's bad in the sense that he's. Well, he's man. just he's just Tony Stark. He's got the same idea. He wants to put us. You know, he, he wanted to create Vision to protect the world and end up. You know, with Ultron, no. and it went wrong. I mean, he's just trying to do the right thing in his mind. There's a specific line in I can't remember exactly which episode, but Haywood mentions something about Monica not being there for five years, and he had to watch the world burn for five years, and she didn't. She didn't have to. Yeah. Go so he just that. wants like, a shield of armor he, around the world. Yeah. He, kind of yeah but like he wants to do that by doing whatever it takes and if that means setting off a fucking nexus level being and getting a piece of her power because she's tied to an infinity stone so so he she, he can you know power back up that sentient weapon that previously was powered by an infinity stone he's gonna he's gonna do what he needs to do let me hit you with some and, some, and some... The, Damn big, the consequences you big know? questions that we're gonna get short answers for um mephisto still involved no no? Okay, he's out? Okay. Was Quicksilver from another dimension, or is it just a convenient play from, you know, Disney and Marvel? Different dimension. Unsure. Because they kind oh, of really was... dialed it back down in this one, where Agatha's just like, oh, I got the fake one, but because the real one was dead, and, you know, blah, 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 well, blah. Kevin uh, Feige came out the other day and saying that it's just, they're having Evan Peters here, it's just the way that people were messing with Wanda. And I'm like, there's an, if you guys are doing that, it is such a bullshit thing to pull on the fans. Yeah, like, well, I think it's such a it feels huge that way. bullshit thing to pull on the fans. Yeah. You know what, though? Like, the, the Marvel fans are smart enough that Kevin Feige is meta enough to pull something like that. So, well, like, he, he, he can say that that's what he intends, but obviously, next week or this week, we may find out that obviously he could just be throwing us off for the sake of leaving this episode to a surprise. Yeah, it'd be say, interesting have... to see what happens when Agatha's power over him vanishes and then what he has to say. Yeah. That's so, going to be the interesting part. Here's a side question. Do you think when when Fiatro, we'll call him, found Monica at the end of the at the end of episode seven, was he under her was he under Agatha's control or not? No, I don't think so. You think he's just think trying to I, figure out what's going on as well? Yeah, I think he's just trying to figure out what's going on and he's just chilling. Because obviously they're missing at the end of episode eight. They're not there when they go into the street and whatnot. So obviously they're off doing something. Big one. So is Quicksilver and wonder are they mutants who then simply had their powers amplified by the uh the mind stone wonder yes wonder yeah she is a she isn't she is the original mutant either she's just a mutant or she's just has natural magic powers and a, a natural connection to magic so i mean could they be hinting or implying that there are mutants but uh the world that we're currently in they never get a chance to sort of evolve and become proper mutants so just because you know obviously it tends to happen during teenage years you know during um, well, puberty. Yeah, well, they said that i remember in the old x-men comics that people were born with the mutant gene all over the world but due to like all the nuclear tests and stuff like that going off and like energy things rising with the world it caused more people to be born and the powers to activate I'm yeah. Pretty sure something- yeah. So what I'm saying like, is, is, is it possible that in in the current MCU we have we do have people that have the mutant gene, but it's just not manifesting, and it's so just, just because really she fun. was influenced by the Time Stone, that's an example Mind of that. Stone. Mind Stone. Sorry. Yeah, that's an example of that. So yeah, I mean, now that we've had we've had massive Infinity Stone event, you know, where we've had half the world wiped out and we've had time reversed, we've had all this other stuff happen. Maybe more people are going to get that that gene, you know. One hundred percent. So you can have ones like uh, Professor X and Magneto, who are like top ten mutants. They could have their powers fully fledged, but other people could just have very minor versions until the snap happened, and oh, your powers have activated. Yeah. Is Darcy going to have powers now? Do you think? Yeah. She only went through once. Right. I, I feel like it could be that they might just have Monica as being a mutant, and that it affected her. She went through. Be something like that. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So to wrap it up, prediction for episode nine, Lucas. It is good. No, no. I mean the coming episode, the final episode. What do you think is going to happen? No, no. You know, it is good. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm going to say. It is good. That is my prediction. It is going to be very good. That, that, okay, Ethan. Do you have a, a a prediction for the final episode? I have a prediction. I have several. Can I say them, whether they're spoilery or not? Yeah, go for it. I predict we are going to see Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. possibly Baron Water. Oh, not this again. Mm-hmm. I feel like we are going to learn that Agatha, while 
she's doing her own thing. Someone else is in the background of Agatha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pulling some strings, causing some people some nightmares. Um, and we also might learn that where Agatha draws her purple colored powers from that have shown up somewhere else in the MCU. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I know what you mean. My predictions. Okay. Wait, what are you talking about? Well, one of the movie heads had purple shit in it. Yeah, Wakanda. No. No. What What does Wonder Vision lead into? Spidey. Oh my god. Well, and Doctor well, Strange. And what was in the first Doctor Strange that was all very purple? Nah, Dormammu. Yes. No. Yeah, and the, you, the, getting you, their power you, from you, the the. You the... learned that the ancient one is over five hundred years old, so she would know about Agatha. Yep. And, and, Agatha, and that... Agatha's obviously hundreds of years old as well, so. Sixteen hundred. So, yeah, only really the ancient one knows about Agatha, and Agatha. They said that she was dealing with dark magic at the start of episode eight, and her magic was purple. The other witches were blue. You go back and yep. watch Doctor Strange, like I did on the weekend, which I forgot to mention. You see that when Caecilius and that use their powers, and while they look like mirror spears, there's purple energy coming out of their hands when they do it. Yeah, I feel like, and also the ancient one was using the dark dimension to keep herself young who's to say agatha hasn't been doing the same thing yeah all right so what's coming soon ethan on the 18th we have coming to america yep and of course Zack snyder's uh justice yeah. league on the 18th yep. wonder, wonder vision ends then after wonder vision we'll have uh the special uh, oh, no, no, sorry i'm coming to america is out this friday yeah oh, there you go yeah so then we get the special for wonder vision after wonder vision and then uh it's straight into um Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier and Falcon, yeah. Um, we have the Mighty Ducks comes on the March twenty sixth. I was gonna say this this week this week's actually pretty fucking crazy for for stuff. Right, yeah, uh, uh, Dragon are out March fifth. Chaos, year, Walking, Chaos well. Walking's out this week too, right? Uh, I got no idea. I think Chaos Walking's out this week, and so is that Raya and the Last Dragon. So I just said. Yeah, and then obviously coming to America too. Uh, we've got. I'm just having a look too. We've got uh the little things hitting the cinemas. Which has got um, Rami Malek and um, Jared Leto, Denzel Washington. Apparently, that is excellent from what I've heard. Uh, what else is out? Boss Le Boss Level with Frank Grillo, Mel Gibson, Naomi Watts. <laughs> Apparently, that is ridiculous. Frank Grillo, he's coming up, isn't he? Yeah, man, he's doing everything. First uh, movie where he's built first. Hey, he's the lead. First movie he's done where he's built first, and he's the lead. Yeah. Uh, oh, Eric Benner's got a new film out, The Dry. Wonder Woman's still there. Monster Hunter's, Monster Hunter's still there if you want to gouge your eyeballs out. Yeah. So there's a little bit on at the cinema, which is which is good. There's a little bit on. You could you could, you could could find something there if you really needed to get back to the cinema. And then, yeah, plenty on the streaming services. Of course, you've also got all the Fox stuff to get through now on, um, well, some of the Fox stuff, some yeah. of the Hulu stuff, whatever have you, on uh, on Disney now, thanks to the, the Star section. It's funny, though, is like in this like Star update, so obviously there's supposed to be a whole bunch of like adult-related content. For some reason, I think... Unless it was there before and I didn't notice, there's now a whole bunch of Muppet stuff on there. So I'm not sure if that was from the Star Content update or if it's just been there the whole time and I've never seen it. Don't know. Don't know. But I'm going to definitely go through and watch all the Muppet stuff soon. Ethan's a Muppet. He sure is. Yeah. That's why we <laughs> love him. Fucking Muppet. All right, well, I guess that's it for this episode. Uh, next episode, uh, all going well, we should have the finale for WandaVision plus Zack Snyder's justice league so we'll have lots to talk about in that regard no doubt plenty of news and trailers between now and then as well because things are definitely getting back to normal thankfully thank you gentlemen for joining me on this episode as always it's been a pleasure okay and uh i'd like to thank our uh, listeners thank our patreon supporters and uh yeah thank you for listening in and we'll be back uh in two or three weeks dun 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 d